This pool table was one of those projects that keep getting pushed to the side with all the normal, more important stuff we have to do. The first video on this project was posted almost two years ago now, so it definitely feels good to finally get it wrapped up. I designed the base with barn beam, mortise, and tenon construction so that it would match the bar area in our basement. I am really happy with the result, but I would love to hear your ideas on what you would have done different. The first video on this project covered how to measure and cut the tenon, and I showed a variety of tools that can be used. I will add a link to that video in the description. Here is the rest of the process I used for creating these joints. Now that we've got our two tenons cut on the uh, crossbeam, the next step is going to be to cut the mortise into the other beam that it connects with, which is the hole that our tenon will slide through. That will be the outside corner. And I want to decide which one of these I want to make into that side there. I'm going to say, I'm going to make this the outside. We will be cutting a mortise to fit this onto here, just like those show over there. This will be C, so I'm going to put a C right here on the inside of this. Now that won't be visible because when everything is put together, the other beam will be up against that. Because the nice thing about these is they don't need any kind of glue. This is a wood joint that is all fit with friction and with pressure from the dowel pin. Uh, we're going to do a draw bore on the dowel pin. I'll explain that later. But you can actually unassemble and reassemble it if you ever need to. So my original plans, I wanted the, the beam to be two inches off from the base of this board here. So I need to go up two inches plus another two, so a total of four before the mortise starts. You were going to let me start cutting, weren't you? No, <laughs> <laughs> so these are our new corners. Make sure we get them marked properly. Double check them. Uh, so here's one and three quarters, and here is one and seven eighths. So that looks right. Let's double check our center point. Nine and a half. So a good way to check that is four and set four and three quarters, and measure it from the other way, and still four and three quarters. Okay. So we've got one side, but we're going to do the exact same process to the other side. The goal is to have this outline on both sides so that when we're cutting through, we can make sure we're staying perpendicular and that our hole is square. I have found what works really well for cutting this out are these pruning blades. You can get these on Amazon. They're pruning blades for a sawzall. So you can get these pruning blades that look very much just like the bow saw as far as the teeth per inch and very aggressive cut. To be able to cut a hole, from the inside, we can't start from the outside in, so we need to get a hole all the way through that is big enough for this blade to pass through. So I'm gonna use a spade bit in my drill, and you wanna to try to get where, the idea is that, started. I'm only gonna go about halfway through. I need to go a little bit more. this side and this side, so we're gonna put another hole just like that over here. Uh, the reason we want two holes is because we can do our straight cuts, but then it's very hard to turn your saw. The easiest solution is just put another hole at that corner, and then that gives us access to this side and this side. I start from this side, and I'm gonna go ahead and just complete the hole, and about halfway through, I should hit my other hole. I like to cut from the side that's going to be the most visible. So this is, see we still have the C here. So this C reminds me that this is the, the face that's going to slide into here. So we've got about a two inch shoulder all the way around here. So the nice thing is that means this much is going to be hidden. So we're not as worried about chipping or gouging on this side. But the opposite side here is going to be visible. So that's the side I like to cut from. I like to cut from the visible side to make sure that I'm not gouging out and damaging the, uh, the visible end. 
and we're going to take our saw and we're going to start cutting and try to cut along these lines the best we can. We can remove some of the high spots that were not quite easy to get with the saw. Next step is we're going to go ahead and place this on a flat surface. And that allows me to fit as I'm cutting. I match them up and I see where we're at. Now, usually it's going to take some fitting. That's normal. We want to find our center point in the middle of this mortise. Uh, sometimes you'll see ones where they'll use two pins. Um, I'm using a very big dowel. Actually, way overkill. Normally you don't need a dowel this big, but I, I like the look of the large dowel. This is one and a quarter inch. So we're just going to use a single pin and we're going to go straight through the middle and out the other side. I don't have a spade bit that big, but I went ahead and ordered a Forstner, which is a woodworking round hole bit. And they're known for making very accurate holes, much more accurate than a twist bit. And they're also great because they make a very clean entry hole. They won't chip up or tear up your wood. Um, so if you have a wood that splinters or chips real easy, these are a very safe bit to use and know that you're not going to gouge your entry hole. Falsner bits work better at low speed, so switch to a low RPM if you're using a cordless. And we'll start this hole. But you can see they make a very nice hole with nice wood chips. Use the height of our beam as an index and we're going to add probably about a quarter inch. It's up to you how much you want to add. You can always trim off when we're done. I like to leave a little bit of the dowel sticking out. Um, I like the look of that. And keep in mind, we're going to be hammering this in and out, so it's going to mushroom a little bit. So you may lose a tiny bit of length depending how hard or soft your dowel is and how hard you have to drive it in. This is my cut line. Okay, so I just cut my dowel to length. Um, we want to round the edges of this a little bit. It's almost like sharpening a pencil. We're going to do both ends a little bit, but the one that we're driving through is actually going to be the more important end. So whichever end you decide that's going to be, you want to kind of work your way around and just with a good sharp chisel, work your way around the dowel. Um, smaller dowels, it doesn't take nearly as long, but what we're trying to do is put a little bit of a ramp on the end of this so that as it's going through, if it comes across anything, it can start wedging in rather than butting up against it. So these are designed to be a very tight fit. And as I'm going to show you, when we drill the hole in our tenon, we're actually going to offset that a little bit. And we're going to offset that so that as this is coming through, it's actually going to pull itself tighter. And you can really even hear these things tighten up. So now we want to check it and see if everything looks tight and the way we want. This is upside down. This is how ours is actually going to be sitting. And I think I'm happy with that. I think, I think that'll fit the way I want. Now remember, this will actually tighten up just a tiny bit more on the final assembly due to the draw board. The next step is we got to mark our holes, or mark our tenon where those holes are. And we just do that with a pencil. So, now before I remove this, we're going to drill a hole through the tenon, but we're not going to drill it right on our center marks. We're actually going to drill it slightly offset. And we want to offset it so the hole is slightly this way. 
And the reason is, is when the pin gets in there, that ramp is going to hit the shoulder on your tenon, and it's going to pull it tight as the pin goes through. There we go. Okay, so here is our mark. This is our circle, as best as I can mark it through there. And just like anything else, we can usually make adjustments if we need to. So I want the ramp to push against the shoulder right here, which means we're going to offset our hole down. I'm going to do, I want to do a little more than an eighth. I'm going to do a quarter, but I may have to make adjustments to that. Um, actually, let me do a quarter, and this may be too much, but I kind of want to show you how to tell and then how to make those adjustments if we need to. So it's better to err on too much offset, because if you don't have enough, you, there's nothing you can do to fix that. If you have too much, we can always shave out this shoulder a little bit or shave down our dowel a little bit to adjust it to get it where we want it. And put it on our offset center mark. Oops, low RPMs. Okay. Now, I was able to drill all the way through, so that means our dowel pin should be no problem to pass through, and it's not. So now, we take our draw bore pin, we see our mark here, and we see our mark here. So we index the marks best we can. Actually, if you look down in there, I want to see if you can see that offset. I'm not sure if that's visible on camera, but you can actually see that offset in there. And that's a pretty big offset. We probably will have to adjust that. But let's give it a try, and I can show you what happens. And I need to grab, for this you're going to want to either use the back side of a hatchet or a hammer. The mallet probably won't be enough for this. And listen to the sound. I may need to make more adjustments to this, but you'll hear the frequency the tone will change as this tightens up. It almost is kind of like a piano string or a guitar string would be better even. As you tighten the guitar string, you hear the higher pitch frequency. The same thing happens with this as it's tightening. And that's what you need to listen to. And if it gets to where you're pounding really hard, it's barely moving and it's a very high pitch, you probably want to push it back out and make some adjustments and then try again before anything breaks. You hear that pitch change as it's getting tighter? Now, I think this one's going to go on through. Yeah, we're already through the tenon. If you look on the back side, we're past the tenon and we're back into the other side of our um, mortise. So I think this one will go ahead and pull tight, though it's a little tighter than I was originally going to do it. So I don't want to really wail on this. I'm just going to keep hitting it about medium, medium strength and hope it just keeps on working its way through. We'll see. I think it is. I think we're going to be good. If I wanted to make any adjustments, I would have took my draw, my punch or chisel. And, or actually, this is a drifter punch. And again, flat side down, drive our pin back out, adjust our offset a little bit, chisel out a little more, and start again. I think this time we're going to be able to drive it home, though. Okay, and I want to get it to where it's sticking out about the same on both sides. That's just a cosmetic. And I think that's about there. So now, this is a very solid joint. Way, way overkill for my application. But if you were building a barn, this would be a solid beam joint that this is, there's no play in here whatsoever. Um, and there's no hardware. There's no metal parts. This is all wood. And all the strength comes from the tight fitting pieces and the draw bore, tightening it all up snug. And if I ever need to take it apart, I can. I can take my punch and drive that back out and then use my mallet and separate everything back apart again. And as long as I keep track of my pieces and my index marks, I should be able to reassemble it once I get it moved. 
Thank you for watching, and if you've made it this far, please like and subscribe my channel. It really does make a difference. And let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. I make an effort to read all comments on my channel. Thank you.